Section 1.6 is on absolute value equations and inequalities. The absolute value of a number is its distance from zero on the number line. Since the number 5 is 5 units from zero on the number line, the absolute value of 5 is 5, written like this with the absolute value bars. Since negative 5 is also 5 units from zero on the number line, the absolute value of negative 5 is also 5, and it's written like this. Now to solve an absolute value equation, you must take into account that the expression between the absolute value bars is equal to either the positive or the negative value of the expression on the other side of the equal sign. Let's take a look at several examples here. So the first one to solve each absolute value equation, check your solution and then graph. So we have the absolute value of the quantity 2x plus 5 and that's equal to 9. So that means that this stuff between the bars which is 2x plus 5 is, whoops, excuse me, 2x plus 5 is equal to either a positive 9 or 2x plus 5 is e equal to a negative 9 because this expression in the bars can be either positive or negative. So solving that I get 2x equals 4 or x equals 2 and solving this I get 2x equals a negative 14 or x equals a negative 7. This one is simple enough that I think I can check this in my head. So let's go ahead and plug in 2 for x. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 5 is 9. The absolute value of 9 is 9. That one checks. Let's plug in negative 7. 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. Plus 5 is a negative 9. And the absolute value of negative 9 is 9. So both of those check. So that's my solution. Now to graph an absolute value equation on a number line, you're basically just graphing those two values. So I'm going to put those on the number line here, and then just put a dot at each one of those. Let's take a look at our second example here, which says 1 third times the absolute value of the quantity 3x minus 6 minus 2 is equal to 5. <clears throat> Notice that only 3x minus 6 is between the absolute value bars. So my first step is to isolate that. I need to get it all by itself. So to do that, I'm going to start by adding, oops, adding 2 to both sides. And that's going to give me 7. Then I want to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 1 third, which is 3. And that's going to give me the absolute value of the quantity 3x minus 6 is equal to 21. Now that's going to, now I need to rewrite that as two uh, equations. So 3x minus 6 equals a positive 21 and 3x minus 6 equals a negative 21. Adding 6 to both sides gives me 27 and x equals 9. Adding 6 to both sides gives me a negative 15 and x equals negative 5. Let's go ahead and check each one of those. So when x equals 9, I have 27 minus 6, which is 21. The absolute value of that is 21 times 1 third is 7. 7 minus 2 is 5. That one checks. Let's try negative 5. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Minus 6 is negative 21. The absolute value of negative 21 is positive 21 times 1 third is 7. 7 minus 2 is 5. So both of those check. And then to graph those on a number line, oops, it's kind of sloppy. I'm just going to put those two values here and dots on those numbers. Okay, and then let's take a look at our last example here, which is a little more complicated. And this says the absolute value of negative 2x plus 9 is equal to 3x plus 10. So my absolute value is already isolated, <clears throat> so I need to write my two equations negative 2x plus 9 is equal to 3x plus 10 and now my other equation is going to say 2x plus 9 is equal to a negative 3x plus 10. Notice that I put the negative sign out in front of parentheses that are around the 3x plus 10 because that whole expression needs to be negative. Now let's go ahead and solve that. So this is going to give me a negative 5x is equal to 1 or x is equal to a negative one-fifth. And over here, I need to treat this negative outside the parentheses as though I were distributing a negative one. So negative 2x plus 9 
equals negative 3x minus 10. So adding 3x to both sides gives me x is equal to, and then, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I did that right. And then subtracting 9 on both sides is going to give me a negative 19. Now, I need to check both of those um, solutions because in the previous examples, the this, this equations were pretty straightforward. This one is a little tricky because I had to take the negative of a, whole ex of a whole expression, so it's important that I check these. So let's go ahead and plug negative 1 fifth into the original equation here. So is the absolute value of 2 times negative 1 fifth plus 9 equal to 3 times negative 1 fifth plus 10. So this is going to give me 2 fifths plus 9. The absolute value of that is that equal to negative 3 fifths plus 10. <clears throat> this is going to give me 9 and 2 fifths. And 10 minus 3 fifths is 9 and 2 fifths. So a negative 1 fifth does indeed work. Now let's go ahead and check this one here. Is negative 2 the absolute value of negative 2 times negative 19 plus 9 equal to 3 times negative 19 plus 10. Remember, I'm substituting this back into the original equation. So this is going to give me, so um, 2 times 19 is 38 plus 9. The absolute value of that is that equal to a negative 57 plus 10 is 47 equal to a negative 47? It is not, so that answer does not work. So in this case, I only have one answer, which is a negative 1 fifth. So just a heads up, anytime you have to take the negative of a whole expression on one side of an absolute value equation, please make sure you check, because you can end up with an extraneous solution, one that appears to work, but actually doesn't. Now, to solve an absolute value inequality, we need to rewrite it as a compound inequality. If the absolute value of an expression is less than a given value, then the expression is between the positive and negative of the given value. This becomes an AND inequality. If the absolute value of an expression is greater than a given value, then the expression is greater than the positive of the given value and less than the negative of the given value. This becomes an OR inequality. Let's take a look at a couple examples of each of these, or one example of each of these. So here we have the absolute value of 4x plus 3 is less than 5. So this is, this is a less than, it's going to turn into an AND inequality. So I can rewrite it as this. So 5, negative 5 is less than 4x plus 3 which is less than 5. You'll notice I basically took the inequality and dropped the bars, and that's this part of it right here. But I need to say that this value between the bars is also greater than a negative 5, or negative 5 is less than that value. Now I can go ahead and solve this as I did in the last section. So subtracting 3 from both sides, and then dividing by 4, negative 2 is less than x, which is less than one half. That's my solution. And the graph of that is going to look like this. Negative two, one half, and x is between those two values. So if it's less than, it's going to turn into an and, and it's between the two values. <clears throat> Here I have the absolute value of 2x plus 6 is greater than or equal to 10. This is going to turn into an OR inequality. So I'm going to rewrite the inequality without the bars. So that stuff between the bars is greater than or equal to 10. Or the expression between the bars is less than or equal to a negative 10. So in other words, it has to be greater than 10 or less than a negative 10. So solving that. I get 2x is greater than or equal to 4, x is greater than, greater than or equal to 2, or 2x is less than or equal to negative 16, or x is less than or equal to negative 8. And there's my solution, and don't forget that with an OR inequality, you always have to write the word OR. Graphing that on the number line, negative 8, 2, 
and solid dots greater than 2, less than negative 8. Here's a summary of what we did with absolute values from your textbook. So if we're taking the absolute value and it's, and it's an equation, it's an equals, then your solution is just two values. If it's an absolute value that is less than or less than or equal to a certain value, it means that that distance from the distance from x to 0 is less than a units, and so that's going to be between those two values. If it's a greater than or a greater than or equal to inequality, then the distance from x to 0 is greater than a units. And the last thing we're going to take a look at here is called tolerance. A manufactured item's actual measurements and its desired measurements can differ by a certain amount. In other words, when you're making a product, it's not always going to be exact. This certain amount is called tolerance, it's, or the amount that is tolerated for the difference to be. Tolerance is considered to be one half of the distance, difference of the maximum and minimum accepted values. And we can use an absolute value inequality to express this. Here's an example. You're cutting a piece of wood to make a table. Each, each piece should be four, basically, and three quarters feet long. But you are willing to use a piece if it is greater than 4.7 feet and less than 4.8 feet. Write an absolute value inequality that expresses the tolerance of the length of the piece of wood. So, what is the accepted tolerance? So, 4.8 minus 4.7, which gives me 0 0.1, and then I want to take half of that, so divide that by 2. So my tolerance is going to be 0 0.05. <clears throat> That's how much it can vary. So I'm going to let x equal the length of the piece of wood. And then I say the difference between the length of the piece of wood and what I want it to be, 4.75 feet. And I need that to be a positive number, so I'm going to take the absolute value. That has to be within or less than 0 0.05 feet. And that's how we would write an inequality, an absolute value inequality to express the tolerance of this piece of wood. So in this section we took a look at absolute value equations and inequalities. Remember that when you're writing an equation, absolute value equation, you need to write the two possibilities, the positive and the negative. Also remember that absolute value inequalities are rewritten then as a compound inequality, either as an and inequality or an or inequality. One was a little long.